Howdy lovelies, how are you all doing? Welcome back to our Crafting, where we learn, grow and craft together. In today's session for the next episode of the African Safari Journal Making series, we are going to make our own paper. And no, we're not going to blend paper pieces or any of that. We are going to cheat a little bit. This is part of the new craze, collage fodder, where you can make any mark making and it actually can be used in so many different paper projects and you can use it as collage backgrounds and all of that. So we will be making a few as we will be using this for borders and some ephemera pieces or embellishments. Now, later on in the next session, we will be looking at adding some more mark making to the back of our paper. Remember some of them uh, well, well, I printed all of them on cardstock and the back is then plain white so we want to work a little bit on that and beautify it but back to today's session so without further ado let's get started so what do we need I'm going to use plain white copy paper some green this this sheet of green has been used <laughs> slightly used so it's not a full a4 but it's still quite functional if you prefer a full page you can go for full pages i've grabbed what i had on my desk some pink some yellow and some orange i might do a few other colors like darker green maybe purple um i could also do a blue maybe light blue and a darker blue maybe a burnt orange i will see as time goes on i will know what else do we need some paint pens yes we need some paint pens if you don't have paint pens, you can use some alcohol type black markers that will not react or bleed too much on the paper. So, my process is this. When I want to make something that has got a pattern, now I'm going to move this colored sheet to the one side for now. Going to grab a ruler that is see-through so that I can see where I'm drawing lines. Grabbing a pencil and ever so gently, I'm going to draw lines across just for me to keep within. Oops, I just moved it within this so not too dark you don't want it to be permanently there you can if it's part of your your whole design that you want to include lines you can actually draw these lines with a paint pen already or as i said earlier with your alcohol ink marker so that it is within i might be a little bit out of view for this last one please bear with me now you can go in and make another one in the middle. I prefer to turn my page like this so that I can see where I am in between. Now, this is more or less there. So I'm going to just go ahead and draw more lines in the middle, sort of in the middle. You can measure it perfectly well if you so wish. I know some people would find it hard to just draw a line without measuring, and that is fine with me. It's just me that is a bit careless. So you can go ahead and and maybe do this more if you want a more symmetric type like pattern. Now, what are we going to do? I always test my pens just to make sure there's quite a few layers of these tiny little white memo pad papers. And I'm going to start. I've got, let me show you my sets. I've got a thicker set. Sorry for the price still being on it. I'll quickly remove that. Um, it's not an advertisement or any of such a thing. I use what I have. These paint pens are 1.8 to 2.5 millimeters so they're quite wide then i've got and in this set there are 16 colors 16 colors it also includes gold and silver and some very fleshy light color orange and purple and gray that's net not in the other sets so then the standard set it's got eight pens and it is 0 0.9 to 1.3 millimeters those are the basic colors literally the basics you don't have the thicker of oh, the thicker the orange the lighter green purple in there neither gold or silver and then my other set which is very thin not that thin but it's not ultra thin is 0 0.7 millimeters and again the same basic seven colors but we don't need more for the african safari than these colors that i have here you do get it in metallics you do get it in pastels as well so i like to just check my colors before i use them and i'm going to start with some sort of a color i have no pattern in mind literally no pattern these can be used also later on as some sort of a collage photo sheet so don't throw it away yet make sure your ink is well saturated and let's get started these pens one thing i want to to just reiterate say again make sure everybody knows are acrylic paints so it can easily be washed off your work surface 
let's see I'm going to start just want to get this a visual see this is all unplanned I do not plan anything I hardly ever do and then I just want to fold it one more time I don't want a permanent fold so it's hard because it bubbles now and it will definitely have an impact on my paper look there but it's okay if it doesn't have a memory you can always just flatten it under a heavy book for which I will turn it upside down once it's dry and then put something heavy on it overnight you can also iron it if you want to but once it's glued down there isn't a bother why did I fold that line because I want to do a zigzag pattern and I want to start and no it's not perfect it's never intended to be perfect the whole idea was that I get it sort of centered but it's not I'll just freehand it you can go in and measure it there is no worry whatsoever you do you if you find a better way than what i'm showing you by all means and there are many videos on youtube with different types of collage photo as well now as you will remember in session one i have shown you already the paper pack that i'm going to use which is from dgns vg designs for you they are on etsy and i use their big five from friends set as well as the ephemera set a really beautiful set now i want some brighter pieces as well to incorporate in to incorporate in the journal and to supplement their beautiful kit and that's the thing once you use a kit it doesn't mean you have to use it in its entirety as was given or the way that you have acquired it you can literally make it your own by adding or taking away pieces and through that process you give your project your own personality and that is the beauty of being creative and playing or artfully playing you are giving your own imagination some freedom and you can have a total different end result than a different person now i'm probably not going to have time to do more than one maybe two sheets i just want to mention that you can also use very <laughs> intricate tools and with these intricate tools i mean you can use bottle caps and print with that have your your acrylic paints or gouache whatever you're using dip it in a thin layer dip it in and make your imprints it will go a whole lot faster you can use a whole lot of things um even the caps you can clean it afterwards for instance if you had a dry um pen any type of caps glue caps you know the glue stick caps you can use um, a pencil with an eraser you can use q-tips you can use the back of packs you know clothes packs clothes pins depending where you're from you call it different things to me it's a clothes pack um you can use small glasses you can even use something like a ruler dip it in the paint and have your mark making the possibilities are absolutely endless and you will easily see bottle cups from juice bottles or some oil caps you know some of those are small you can maybe have some square like things keep it together put it in a little container for yourself and you will be amazed at how many different things you can have to make marks with a fork a plastic fork or even a metal fork you can wash this afterwards um all of those things are possibilities for you to actually use now this one i'm just going to do a short one not as long because we don't have that space and yes we will fill this up it is a bit of a time consuming process but it is such a rewarding one when you had made your own. So mark making is a very relaxing pastime. It is a mindful activity and it really helps to de-stress. Though time consuming, it is really so satisfying to actually do and, and work on patterns. Now you can, and I'm going to use the thicker one now. I could have done that from the start, but just to see if it will work out, just make sure this is working and yes some of these pins are more frequently used than others a few dots there just to make sure it's saturated and if you continue with this pattern that will also be as i said a wonderful collage for the piece now from here i'm going to start at the bottom and just thicken this up
you can even make little prints of cardboard, thick cardboard box, maybe little coils that will be a stamp that you can add. Will this be perfect? No, but that's the beauty of it. It's not supposed to be looking as if you had bought the paper. And these two greens are not exactly the same color, which is understandable. And no, it is not bothering me too much. Now I will just do that and I will come back to the paper later. If you press too hard, there will be quite a big blob of paint coming out. So just make sure that's why I tend to just make sure. See, I press too hard, so there's a lot of paint coming out, but that can stay there. That's why I have those little pieces. I'm going to start with a, some sort of a coil here. If you want to do some research on African textiles printing to get some inspiration for your own, Google has got quite a bit. And of course there are also some African print papers available all over Etsy. Some big brands have got some. I know my hand might be a little bit in the way of you seeing how I'm drawing this, but it's a simple spiral. You can of use, of course, use stencils as well, but just bear in mind that if your paint pen is too wet, it seeps through underneath the stencil. So it should be a guide, and the little thing shouldn't be colored in. Um, I'll show you now so that you can understand. Let me let that dry a little bit. I've got, oh, let me use my Tim Holtz one. Just grab another paper. If you do the circles, it can work. But if your pen is too wet, it will seep through underneath. There you have that. So it can work if you are patient enough and don't press too hard on the pen. Otherwise, there will be lots of paint coming through. Once this is dry, I will be able to wipe out the lines that I have drawn. And I don't have to reiterate again. That it will not be perfect unless you use small stamps. I have another video, actually two, where I made a tag and an Easter card using collage photo that I made myself, also of mark making. If you want to get some inspiration, how to use this other than in the African Safari Journal. You can add as many colors as you want, different types of lines. You can use stencil stamps, anything, really literally anything. For this bottom one, I am merely going to make little dots. They're not even completely centered. Let's get another color in here. Maybe some blue, we will do some yellow. Just always making sure that my pins are saturated. Now am I starting that side now? I'm skipping a whole row here. Yeah. Just adding simple triangles. Freestyle. Again, you could have drawn a line to help you get the size the same, if it would bother you if they are not exactly the same size or height. As you can see, these paint pens apply very easily and smoothly. I'm going to turn this over merely for the fact that I started there and that paint is still not dry. So, let me continue with the first two. That way we can have some sort of a idea of where we're going with this.
I'm still very close to that line, as is that one. If you look at these patterns, very simple, and that's why I say you can easily do these with alcohol markers or any other type of marker pen. And then turn this around here again for this side. So, not wanting to see that with paint, as that will be disastrous. Some of these are a bit wide, so there isn't as much space like that one to fit in the little dots. And we have that. Now, I would want some orange in here as well. And I don't want to mess this up. I'm going to put a bit of orange in between here. As I like this, now we'll continue this pattern. So, I like that. I'll put it one side. Now, we can have any pattern. So I'm just, wait, that was supposed to be in the middle. And it's not in the middle of the triangle. I hope you get the idea of not making it literally can be anything. But these ones, I'm going to. Just put a tiny orange triangle in. Almost ends up looking like hearts, the way I don't make sure the ends are the same. All skew. I must be honest, I prefer making mark making dipping my paint with the ink as well if you want to. Into the paint with some um, apps, whatever, and then do the man, you know, the mark making, opposed to the free handing of this. This is kind of difficult. So I'm going to start in between here, maybe this side, just to do some sort of pattern. I know I have no background of any tribal histories or any such thing. I'm just doing what I feel like. Normally when I do this, I set myself an alarm clock because I can completely forget about my surroundings without even trying, literally without trying. Now I want to just try and mimic this in the next line. Again, you can measure if you want to, to give it more evenly spread. To be honest with you, when I think of Africa, I think of wicker baskets, wooden beads, wooden ornaments, masks, all of those, those are the, the images that comes to mind. And I've got some paint oh, from there. But you can see it will wipe off. And I'm just using my finger and my nail when I put water there. It will be able to rub off. So let's continue with this pattern. Some of my lines are quite a bit long. And it's not an issue. Not a drink smash. Ambulance. 
if we just try and get these buttons sorted and i don't want to do it the same as that but we are basically forced to do more or less the same So this part will be that one type of print. Yes, you can make the whole sheet the same. And in that case, you can cut off that last little strip. Or you can make parts of it different. You can divide your paper up into four parts or six parts or eight parts and work in smaller such like patterns. So we need a bit of yellow. in those circles that makes me think of the Islamic evil eye as it's the same colors the white with the darker blue and the lighter blue so this part I think is done maybe just put three dots there just to fill up the space I know I'm jumping from pattern to pattern but that gives you an indication of how my brain works like literally the last two triangles there so this part is done now you can go in with a thin or a thick black pen and draw a line which is what i would want to do i just want to make sure that this is already dry it doesn't take too long and here where i am it really doesn't take that long for anything to dry i just want to get my little wee and i just put my finger in paint which is in itself not an issue problem is just that i will be touching things so i want to just put a line there and yes i said we will erase it but in this case i'm drawing a line so i won't be erasing it when you lift it make sure you see i've got now black marks right across from where I put the ruler. So just be mindful of that. So I'm going to wipe it every single time. Lift it exceptionally carefully. Wipe it before I put it down. Move this across as I do not want that paper to be smudged at this point with any black. And as it is, I already have a kind of black that. I think it rounded it off nicely. And yes, I did use my design ruler there. Just need to wipe that before I smear anything else that off because my baby wipe is dry. So I need to, I think, draw one more line here just to finalize this that side of the ruler. And definitely not on the other paper. Very carefully lift up so that I do not smear. I like how that runs off. I think this side is done for me. That can be quite interesting. Parts of it can be used for journal cards or holding a journal card, making a small collage. So many different possibilities. So I'm going to stop here because this is going to become a very long video if I don't. But I do want to show you how to use acrylic paints to make mark making. So I'm going to show you now how to mark make with objects. I've got a few acrylic paints. I've got some red, not a perfect red, this is magenta, which is still fine. Some orange, pure orange, not too much paint left in there. Some blue, cobalt blue, green, and some just green. And then the yellow is a gloss acrylic paint, which is what it is, right? Now, my mark making tools are really not something that you can buy in a shop. These would be things that would be normally discarded. So I've got a medicine cap. You can use both sides if you want to, but that can make a bigger circle. I've got an old glue cap for that size. I've got that part that was on top there that I use. I don't know what this is. I found it in my drawer and I haven't a clue. Um, something was attached to that. I really don't know what it is. Go have a look. You will find stuff. This is the cap of a glue stick. Uh -huh. There I use that part too. Then another little thing. This is coming from the soda stream. It's the cap for the gas canister that I know. And then I have a bigger cap here. You can, oh, and don't forget my trusty pencil. You can see the eraser is black from the last one. You just dip it in. You can also use Q-tips. I'm using a piece of cellophane. It's time for me almost to throw it away. So I'm not going to mind. I will eventually open it up. Um, I might just do that from the start. So let me get my paper this side of me and I can use that there. Now there should be space for this to be put down. I'll do that, the pencil that side. And I'm going to start with this scrap piece of green paper. Yes, it is a scrap piece. I showed you this was cut off. So I'm um, starting with cobalt blue. Just want to shake this up a little bit. And we're squirting some out. Now, 
let's get started. When we tap, I like to just use whatever tool I've got, these very sophisticated tools, and just going to make my marks. It can be random, it can be this one is now a bit. Still not perfect prints, but it is okay. It can be random, you can do it in straight lines, fill up the blank areas. The paint shouldn't be a puddle, otherwise it will definitely not make the best print. I just need a little paper there, because I want to add one here, just to complete that row. And that can go there again. This one keeps lifting up because it's got a double layer, but it's okay. I'm sorry for the constant noise when I left it up in your ear, that crinkling sound. So, we'll just do this one. I'll do the rest of camera, as it will be an exceptionally long video if I do all my sheets on here. Again, like earlier, you can do the whole sheet the same, or you can do it in quarters, six or eights. If you go bigger than that, it will be very small, depending on the purpose of your paper. You can see that space there is bigger than what the others have been. It really truly is what it is. Now you can decide on some color scheme for yourself. You can maybe use the same sort of pattern. Um, it's always a good thing to try and just maybe get some of that paint off. Um, then it will be a better print. Going to put that inside as center as I possibly can. Sometimes I just fold this over so we can ink up all the sides. Use that one again for there. Let's see if it will do a second one. Sort of not the nicest print, but it's still effective. If this is not your style, you can skip this all together. And like I said, you can use some commercially made paper or just print the end papers from that kit on the back side, like I had done with some of my sheets, but not all of them has got that. So I would still try and work on the back of some of those. Yes, it is a slow process. And especially if you want to have your circles perfectly lined up then it will take more time you can go in with the pink pens and fill in the areas there we go i want to show you by using a peg, what would be the effect? I'm going to just dip it in this. My paint is almost done. So let me just grab a tiny little bit more. There we go. And take that. Yes, when I do my editing, I will be doing some parts a little bit faster. Just to speed up the process for you. Hmm. With the paint, you can easily get a second generation print. This one keeps on missing. Maybe just put enough paint on there. So we have that. Now I can use one of the picks that I normally use to help when I'm gluing things down. So I'm just wiping down the paint and putting it back in its place so that I have it. Now with this, you can easily do it in one color, which is what I'm doing here just because I've got the paint. want to move this a tiny little bit in so that you can see some clearer idea of what I'm doing. I'm 
and the last few. There we go. Now we need some color in here. Same thing, I'm going to just wipe the paint from this little eraser. Let's see. We need a bit of, I think, some orange. I hope they're still painting this little container. It seems a bit... Hmm. No, the orange is done. There's just a bit of the medium in it that is coming out. Let's do the yellow then. No issue. I don't want too much yellow, as it's a gloss anyway. So to this one, I'm just using the yellow, and I'm just going to tap it in between. Hmm. So some, oops, I picked up some of that orange, the oil from that orange now. Let me just... I would want to redo some of these just to make sure they are a little bit more clearer. That one. And that one, for instance, where it's got a bit of that oil from the orange. Oops. And in between there. And you can continue now till you are satisfied with your sheet. And if it so turns out that you absolutely hate it, which I doubt, you can always throw it away or use it as some sort of a background paper for something else. Because after all, it is just paper. And there we have the yellow. Now you can go in with your paint pens. This should take a little while to dry. And I will just grab a white one. And I'm going to make some marks in between. Just be mindful of <laughs> wet paint. I'll turn this a bit. Just so that I can look in between. Again, just freehanding this. All these little X's. You can use a little bit of dots in the circles. Don't have to go right around. You do you. Whatever tickles your fancy, honestly. You can go in and do it with a different color, green or blue. You can use a paintbrush, Q-tips, literally anything to help you with your mouth making. And soon enough, you will see where your page still needs something to fill it up or to add interest. I'm just adding the dots in as some sort of a C-shape. I am really not going right around. I um, just got some paint on my arm, but it's fine. Luckily, it can wash off and it's all in a day's work. I'll turn this again just for ease of application and to minimize the risk of smudging anything while it's still dry. The thicker the paint, of course, the longer it will take to dry. The thinner your application, the quicker it will dry. Of course, your the area where you stay and the weather will also play apart. We can put a white dot in there, so this will be a yellow, white and blue page. You could have added another color, which was what I wanted to do with the orange, yet I couldn't, as the orange is done. But there you have it. Something of that sort. You can go in and draw little lines in between. You can just fill it up. And you can see that it already looks better from where we have started. If it's closer together, I think it makes it bigger here. It is further apart, but still, still looking awesome. I think I like it. Others might not feel the same, and that is their right to feel that way. I love what I'm doing. Oh, I made a block of paint there. Let me just see it. And I do this for my own enjoyment. And if I can teach some, somebody something in the process, then I am a happy chappy. We fold that up actually real quick 
you can go and make polka dots in between. I think I will be using a different blue just to to bring in a different color. There's also a tremendous white blob of paint, but I only just realized now. And I'll turn this yet again so I can work from this side and I must have touched the paint somewhere. And there we have the sheet. I think this one is done. This can now be left to dry. I will be, before our next session, complete another few sheets that we can use in our project. Hope you enjoyed today's session and that you will venture out in making your own collage fodder. Whatever pattern you want, colors, it's up to you. That is where your individuality comes into play. Thank you for joining me today. Go try this for yourself. As always, if you do, please tag Wobble Crafting on social media. I would love to see your makes. If you want to see more content like this, give me a thumbs up, please so that I can bring my videos to more people. If you haven't done so yet, please hit that little notification bell. And as always, I will be appreciating it if you subscribe to my channel too. See you back soon. Goodbye.